the shit I'm talking about right there. Denver, Colorado, how the fuck are you? I love sluts. Before we get into this tonight, you are here on a historic night. We are being broadcast all over the country tonight. So, so we got to make sure that we show the rest of the country we're not a bunch of pussies in Denver, Colorado, all right? Tonight, we are also cutting a live DVD and a live CD to be distributed nationwide by Happy Scratch Records. Also, the skull is shitting on me up here. Also, as I do before every show, I had this annoying little bitch in Orlando, Florida. She gets, she gets bent every time I open, I open up my hole. So, like I do before every show, parental discretion is advised, blah, blah, blah. Fuck that. That's right. That's bullshit. Tonight, we're going to rip it up. Are you ready, Denver? Yeah. How many game show enthusiasts do we have in the house? None? 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 Good. Sorry, I had Chinese for lunch. <laughs> that is the coolest goddamn thing I've ever seen. All right, game shows. Also, before I get into this, we're going to do show monologues. Those of you familiar with the Cone Zone know I run a lot of smack, and boy, I'm going to run it tonight. <laughs> Our first topic for tonight, we're going to talk about game shows. Forgive me, but I have to throw my two cents in here. Now, I don't make it a habit to watch game shows, but in order to present this diatribe, I had to endure some brutal punishment. For, <laughs> for, for, first on my... I'm going to have an issue with that thing tonight. First on my game show list, Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> I have a what? I uh. <laughs> Why don't I run with my own material? I uh, let the crowd do the work. <laughs> it is karaoke night. It's improv night. <laughs> now I haven't watched Wheel of Fortune for at least ten years. Hell, I didn't even know Wheel of Fortune was still on the air until I saw the listing in the TV guide to show you how sick I am. How sick are you? Since I'm... <laughs> Since I... <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, this is going to be great. This is going to be great. Since I'm never home and this show airs, I actually taped it so I could watch it later. <laughs> After... After all this time, Pat Say Jack is still the host. What, 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 one thing I'm guessing about Pat Say Jack and his wussy boy, yeah, I really care what these jag off contestants do for a living, is just a front for television. So when he gets home after pounding down a fifth of gin, he can kick his cat around for pissing on the carpet, pummel his wife as she burnt dinner again, and toss his kids around the pad for getting a B minus in spelling. <laughs> I would give my right testy to hear Pat Sajak tell a brain dead contestant just once, look, there's no fucking tea, shithead. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome to the show, the fastest F bomb in CD history. As far as the other half of this freak show, I used to think Vanna White was a useless slug. After watching my first episode in a decade, my premonition was confirmed. Vanna White, 10 years ago, received out of control jack for flipping tiles around. Now, a decade later, she, she leisurely walks over to the board, touches the tile, and it lights up automatically. One of the most unbelievable quotes I've ever heard flying out of a human being's pie hole, 
came after Vanna squeezed out her first rug rat. She, she ran with, quote, I want to work less, end quote. <laughs> Gee, Vanna, that's insightful. Now, what is exactly you do? I know turning bathroom tiles can be a stressful bitch, but if you work less, you'd be the bread boy at Fazoli's, OK? Next on the game show parade, Family Feud. <laughs> the horror. Whose bright idea was it to trot out a family of five and have them work together as a team? I'm guessing the leader is chosen by way of who hasn't been to jail yet. My favorite time of this show is when we get to meet the families. So without further ado, let's meet the Palooka family. Hi, my name is Bill. I work in the mailroom for a company that distributes gay anal gaping porn. <laughs> this woman next to me has blown every swing and meat whistle in the neighborhood and has the full stomach and runny nose to prove it. <laughs> this is my whore wife, Linda. She is a slut. Over in the third position is our lazier than shit, sleep till noon, skateboard riding, panhandling, bomb building son, Chad. <laughs> next to him, <laughs> next to him is our little seventh grade dropout. I had my first kid before grass grew on the field, daughter Hope. <laughs> and finally, down on the end, my alcoholic, chain-smoking, married and divorced 12 times, and whose skank is so loose she whistles when she walks, mother-in-law Alice. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Palooka family. Give it up. <laughs> Let's meet the host of our show. Since Ray Combs, of the, the host from a few years ago, can't read tonight, I'm a retard. Since Ray Combs decided to become a human Christmas tree ornament, the follow-up follow host of Family Feud, Louie Anderson. <laughs> believe, believe me, folks, I thought it was a joke, too, the first time I heard it. I used to... I think it's pretty safe to say that Louie Anderson is a tad overweight. Hey, Louie, survey says mix in a sit-up between meals, all right? Christ, dude, if you get any bigger, you'll be able to slap top four answers on your ass. Louie Anderson's the only game show host whose tag on his pants reads 747. He's also the only game show host to offer another dude $1,000 to play with his limp whiskey pee-pee. You thought we forgot about that one, didn't you, Louis? <laughs> While Richard Dawson was known for kissing each female contestant, Louie Anderson faz fantasizes about taking balls on the bridge of his nose. Oh. All in all, Family Feud isn't a bad show, except for the happy-go-lucky contestants getting twitter pated and high-fiving each other after every dumb answer that they know the big red X is going to get thrown on them. Family Feud. <laughs> awesome. Next, a game show I loved watching as a kid because I didn't know any better. The price is right. When I, when I flipped on, <laughs> yeah, he does. When I flipped on the Family Feud, I could not believe that Bob Barker is still the host. This guy was a Jurassic Park fossil 25 years ago. As I watched this show in the year 2002, the first thought that ran through my head was, 
as I saw Bob Barker and his fake and bake pie hole, as he stood holding his penis looking microphone was, wow, he's still very alert for being Montgomery Burns old. <laughs> it's nice to see that uh, the Price is Right finally rolled over their prize hookers, huh? Yeah. I was starting to think that Holly was a robot. <laughs> One quick memo to Bob Barker. Since you finally have eye candy turtle wax skanks again, how's about keeping your fucking hands to yourself this time, huh? Yeah. You already ran Gina Lee Nolan off screaming because you're some prehistoric pervert. Don't do it again. Woo! How would you like to be? <laughs> I love you. Hey. How would you like to be the new Barker beauty in the dressing room, putting on makeup and have a naked Bob Barker roll in with his great grandpa crank and cheesy puff balls coming at you? Yeah, I'm guessing that would send me into doing skin mags and porn too. While I'm thinking about it, Rod Roddy, what is up with those clothes, my man? Was Reynolds Rap having a closeout sale? Actually, I should talk. Yeah. Rod Roddy, come on down. You're the next contestant for the village people tryouts, all right? Woo! It's pretty sad watching 21-year-old college students on this show with stupid crap written on their homemade shirt, running up on stage like a spaz after showing up the rest of her brain-dead panel gimps as they got closer to the actual retail price without going over on the luggage set. <laughs> and here I thought California chicks were cool. I gross out when I see a chick run up on stage and kiss Bob Barker on the cheek. I can only guess that kissing Bob Barker is like running your tongue over an old baseball glove. While they show the prize that Mary has a chance to win, off camera she's spitting out Bob Barker's skin flakes. Yeah. Apparently somebody's done that. All right. And how do they taste? <laughs> After Mary finds out she'll be playing for a fantastic weekend to Cheyenne, Wyoming. <laughs> they roll out Mary's cheesy carnival game. Okay, Mary, is that bar of soap $1.49 or $10.69? <laughs> Inevitably, Mary has to look out to the mutant crowd for help. And with that puzzle glazed over look, $1.49? Oh, Jesus Christ. After the big wheel part of the show, I had to turn the channel for a few minutes so I can regain my composure. It was just getting way too intense for me to handle. At the end of every show, Bob Barker reminds us to, quote, control the pet population, have your pet spayed or neutered. <laughs> yeah, great. I'm guessing he must receive discounts every time he says this so he can get nipped and tucked every time a piece of skin comes loose. <laughs> Here is a sign that we are doomed. I stumbled upon on my cable service, the Game Show Network. An entire network devoted to game shows 24 7. <laughs> That's all we need. We ought to go ahead and just call this the Waste of Human Intelligence channel. Now, I hate to sound harsh, but if you're sitting at home at 12.30 in the afternoon, choking down fistful of carbs while watching reruns of 1970s clips of Wink Martindale, you are a loser. And just for the record, Regis Philman, you were the king of all talk show host dipshits. And that's my final answer. Those are my game show takes, but then again, what the hell do I know? All right. How many people, how many people went to the Renaissance Festival this year? It does suck. All right. I'm starting to get a read on you people. All right. Hear ye, hear ye. Tonight, I will be discussing the Colorado Renaissance Festival. Forgive me, but I have to throw my two cents in here. I went into this year's Renaissance Festival in Larkspur, Colorado with an open mind. About 60 seconds, I was annoyed. 
My fellow festival goer was dressed in her boobalicious renaissance garb. I, however, went in shorts and a t-shirt. One minute in the gate, we were confronted. <laughs> we were, <laughs> we were confronted. Yeah, I sort of wore these, you're right. One minute in the gate. I am losing control rapidly. One minute in the gate, we were confronted by some teenage puke with his plastic sword, quote, me lady, why are thou walking with this transient who doesn't know how to dress, end quote. Hey, do me a favor and shut the fuck up, David Hyde Pierce, all right? I didn't pay 28 bones to listen to your old bad English lingo. So do yourself a favor, you little bastard, and stay the hell out of my way before I take that plastic lance and shove it up thou ass. I think it's pretty safe to say that I pretty much hate you now. In fact, I hope you impale your bean bag with your plastic sword and your testicles spill out resembling the leper stepping out of the bathtub. How's that, Sir Dorks a lot? <laughs> One thing I've always wondered about the Renaissance Festival, how is it determined who will be good to King Henry every year? I'm guessing it comes down to the one who gets their shifts covered at Subway gets the gig. George Herman played the role of King Henry this year. Great, congrats to you, G. It's funny watching all the players and this bad play bow to George, <laughs> King Henry, as he sits on his make-do throne. According to the booklet you get as you walk in the front gate, as far as the entertainment goes for the Renaissance Festival, quote, what the king wants, the king gets. Well, isn't that just special? <laughs> My advice to George Herman, don't get used to being treated like royalty, because I'm guessing as of July 29th, when the costumes get junked back into the trunk, it's back to the diamond shamrock where your $9 an hour ass will be stuck in tampon boxes as your 18-year-old manager is out smoking by the back door. As soon as you are relieved of your duties as King Henry, you could go back to the lifestyle of getting hammered in cheese strip club holes as you present your case to the $20 a hand job crack hoe that you deserve free lap dances as, after all, you are the king. <laughs> after that fails, it's time to drive home, hoping to stay DUI free in your broken down, rusted out Chevy Nova. See you next year, good King Henry. One of the, mo one of the quote, most marvelous stage acts at the Renaissance Festival is puke and snot. What the hell is that about? When do fart and queef roll out their set? <laughs> Apparently, Mark Seavey and Joe Kudla, AKA puke and snot, must think that there's some kind of, as they must think they're, all right, let me start that again. I can't read. Apparently, Mark Seavey and Joe Kudla, AKA Puke and Snot, must think they're the Rolling Stones as they have more cheesy merchandise than Krusty the Clown. <laughs> Look, fellas, just do your little vaudeville Shakespeare for Dummies presentation and leave the overkill commercialized paraphernalia to the Hard Rock Cafe, all right? <laughs> An act I do recommend at the Renaissance Festival Dead Bob. After all, you can never see enough ventriloquist acts in a lifetime. Maybe it's me, but I can watch a fist-operated skull talk about tits all day long. Yeah. 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 Kind of like this show. All right. Kudos to you, Dead Bob. Here's a question maybe somebody can help me with. How do I go about applying for the job of tomato guy who hurls insults at people at the Renaissance Festival? No offense, but the dork who holds down the gig now is a bit of a pussy. Let me, throw, let me throw some smack around at some of these brain-dead hamsters who hawk tomatoes like six-year-old girls. Hell, with my mouth, I think I would last about a day before some fat Colorado hillbilly 
replace a tomato with a 45 and make ketchup out of my brains. Before I move on, before I move on, just a quick suggestion to the proprietors of the Renaissance Festival. Get rid of the Jack Daniels country cocktail cart that's parked in the middle of the Renaissance Festival grounds. I'm no historian, but even I know there was no freaking Jack Daniels in the 15th century. I mean, come on, you're selling turkey legs and every kind of grub on sticks. I'm pretty sure we could do it off the Jack, thanks. Nice sponsorship suck up though. Another exhibit? <laughs> ah, I guess so. Another exhibit I recommend checking out at the Renaissance Festival, the Dungeon Museum. Nothing spells out family entertainment like showing how rats chewed the face off of somebody who kiped a loaf of bread. My personal favorite from the torture dungeon was the practice of ripping out the tongues of the women who constantly bitched. Oh, oh, so many comments, not enough time. Since I knew I was going to do a monologue about the Renaissance Festival, I thought it would be kind of fun to screw with the tarot card readers. <laughs> you know, those fat Miss Cleo hogs who change smoke while telling you the obvious events that will unfold in your future. You know, shit like, I see you getting an excessive amount of junk mail, or I see you walking on a sidewalk full of cracks, or I see you, get, I see you getting a phone call from a friend within the next 120 months. So I approached the bag of wind who was looking for suckers, I mean clients. I asked her how much it would cost to have my cards read. As I went into this thinking, this should be a gold mine of material. Before she, she quoted my price, she asked her assistant what time it was. Here I'm thinking, you know, this was part of her shtick. When the other goofball didn't know the time, she then started asking random strangers for the time. That got me thinking. She was gonna tell me my future, but she didn't know the time. <laughs> Something didn't settle in this picture. After a few minutes of pestering people for the time, my $25 a reading quote was uttered. Yeah, I'm going to pay 25 bones to have my cards read. <laughs> I don't think so. Come on, Big Ben. What do I look like, an idiot? You're charging, 20, you're charging 25 bones to spew drivel to the naive, but yet you don't own a Timex. Nice try. How classic is a Renaissance festival? There's absolutely nothing like it. Where else can you witness future criminal 10-year-old kids stabbing each other with plastic swords? Well, besides at Juneteenth. <laughs> yeah, I'll get a phone call. I'll get a phone call on that one later. <laughs> According to my Hanley booklet, quote, the Renaissance Festival allows visitors to experience pageantry, romance, excitement, and 400 years of family fun in a single day, end quote. Apparently, one of the little tramps at the stake on a stake booth took the romance part a little too seriously as she served food with hickeys all over her neck. <laughs> Classy. I wonder if she was playing the role of Renaissance skank. Congrats, congrats ho, you win. My overall impression of the Renaissance Festival, believe it or not, I give it a thumbs up. If you're into, if you're into cleavage, like I am. <laughs> I wouldn't miss the Renaissance Festival if your sack was on fire. I haven't seen this many racks since Poison's 1989 world tour. So eat, drink. Be merry and enjoy the Renaissance Festival for what it's worth. That's my take, but then again, what the hell do I know?
How many people are looking forward to Halloween here at the end of the month? My next, my next topic, we're going to talk about worthless holidays and observances. <laughs> Forgive me, but I have to throw my two cents in here. The reason for this topic tonight, I was watching The Idiot Box on March 17th and couldn't believe what I was watching. A local news anchor kicked it out to a reporter covering the St. Patrick's Day festivities in downtown Denver. During the meaningless, fluff, time-killing report, I witnessed a group of alkies stammering around thinking their hip as they guzzled green beer on a day they knew nothing about. Now I spoke with a gentleman from Ireland shortly after St. Patrick's Day who told me, quote, Americans are morons. End quote. That sums it up. After watching this news report, that got me thinking about all these other worthless holidays and observances that revolve our calendar year. The holiday, the holiday, the holiday that I circle on the calendar every year and is becoming the most amusing day of the year, Columbus Day, October 14th. It's Columbus. <laughs> it's Columbus Day. What could possibly happen on Columbus Day? I park myself in front of the television and sit in Columbus Discovery glee as local Indian windbag Russell Means cranks out his teepee to protest this day. It's great watching Russell Means gather his flock and lead his inebriated sheep to the downtown parade. Every year, it's the same shtick. Halfway through the parade, a group of Indians gets cut off the parade route and inevitably gets hauled away in steel bracelets. Russell then blows his smokestack, so to speak, about how the plight of the Indians in this country is unfair. 24 hours later, when the cameras are turned off, Chief Wahoo then shuts his hole and it's back to the skin house for another 364 days. Good for you, Russ. Your diatribe falls on deaf ears every year. Now go the hell away. Be sh we'll be sure to smoke signal you next October for yet another hilarious, predictable adventure, all right? Can somebody explain to me the concept of Groundhog Day? What the hell is this about? On February 2nd of every year, some palooka in Puxatawney, Pennsylvania, pulls a stinky rat out of a hole to see when spring is coming. You see, this is what happens when hicks have way too much free time on their hands. Can you imagine if this ritual went down in, say, San Francisco? crowd. I love you. I, I can see it now. I can see it now. The mayor of San Francisco pulling the fat furry rodent bastard out of the ground. If a shadow appears, six more weeks of winter. Then, part two of the ritual, Puxatawney Phil then gets jammed into Bruce's rectum, where where if he makes it out alive but can't open his eyes because of all the caked on poop, that's, that's, that's a sign we're getting for a heavy hurricane season. If Phil croaks while choking on stool, that's an indication of a busy tornado season. You get the picture. Here's, here's something. Is it just me or does everybody else wonder what secretary day was like at Enron? By the way, before we go any further, I just want to take a second to wish everybody in the crowd watching at home a very happy belated Cesar Chavez Day. <laughs> just remember, just remember, a two cents an hour Cesar Chavez apple a day keeps bullshit holidays like this away, all right? 
one, one of the biggest hallmark holidays of the year has got to be Valentine's Day. Personally, I could give a shit about this commercialized day of the year, all right? What's the purpose of Valentine's Day? Spending hard-earned jack on the person you're currently skanking because it's expected of you? Come on! I look... I look... <laughs> I look at it this way. If you don't appreciate your significant other every other day in your relationship, why should February 14th be any different? Ha happy, happy Valentine's Day. Here's your dozen roses that'll be dead in a few days. Here's your box of chocolates to add another golf ball dimple to your ass. And here's the, and here's the Hallmark card, which I didn't write the message or paint the picture, but it shows how much I love you. Yeah. Job is a great holiday gift. I, I have something to show you how much I love you too. A full swinging sack of nut custard. Where would you like it? Shall I break out the bathroom towel or will it be going down the hatch so there's no mess? Hallmark. Hallmark, you should be ashamed of yourself taking advantage of the naive like that. And just a quick note to the media who blow this holiday up, stop it. Most people can't figure out a 20% tip on a dinner tab, let alone if this is a real holiday or not. Two more holidays that we need to wipe off of the calendar every year, Mother's Day and Father's Day. Now, 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 hold on, hold on. Hold on. Before, before you call me an ungrateful asshole, hear me out. I, I look at these two holidays, I look at these two holidays in the same way I look at Valentine's Day. Every day should be Mother's Day and Father's Day. All right. That, see you. You turned on me. I'm starting to figure you out. We shouldn't need one particular day of the year to honor our parents. If you have to have a calendar remind you to pick up a rose for your mother, you're a fucking clod who needs to imitate an 83rd trimester abortion, all right? By the way, I love my parents to death, in case you can't tell. Staying on the abortion theme, I have a huge bitch that I need to get off my chest. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're listening to me, and I don't know you, if I've never met you, and if I've never e even spoken to you, quit telling me when it's your birthday, all right? <laughs> Look, losers, I don't give a shit when you pop from the womb, all right? You, you, you pretty much suck, all right? How about this? Before you tell an absolute stranger when it's your birthday, instead close your eyes, make a wish, and go flush your attention getting ass down the toilet, all right? Do I make myself perfectly clear? Sorry for that, but it had to be said. Another holiday where I lock myself in the apartment and don't come out until the next day, Halloween. One of the things, one of the things I love about Halloween are the guys who dress up like women and claim, quote, it's fun to do one day a year. <laughs> yeah, right. You say that. You say that. You say that because nobody's around when you break out the bra, garters, and lipstick on your deviant boy George Saturday afternoon dress up sessions.
They're whacked. I can also pretty much guess that none of your friends have seen you, have seen the show you put on as you stand naked in front of the mirror with your crank tucked between your legs as you run through your, your fingers through your bush while chanting, Daddy's girl's a horny girl. I think, I think that would have been a lot funnier if I didn't screw it up. One day a year, huh? Look, pervs, Halloween is for kids. Save your Bob Crane transvestite parties for Cinco de Mayo instead, all right? One of, my, one of my favorite quotes, one of my favorite quotes ever uttered by a human being came the Monday following Easter. A chick that I work with who was hanging a little bit ran with, quote, I got so drunk celebrating Easter yesterday, end quote. I had, I had no choice but to zip my hole and walk away as I wanted to Ike Turner slap this hoochie. <laughs> Getting drunk on Easter Sunday? Woo! Priceless. I'm sure Christ must be proud witnessing you getting tanked on a day when he came back from the dead. As Jesus is celebrating his resurrection, you're slamming down tequila shots like the plane is going down. I can only guess if Exana Bayul is getting ripped on Easter, she must break out the heroin and shrooms on Good Friday, huh? And for curiosity's sake, and for curiosity's sake, I wonder how many times she's flatlined on Christmas. Actually, I don't want to know. The most worthless holiday on the calendar year, and I've talked about this before on this show, New Year's Eve, December 31st. Oh yeah, oh yeah, New Year's Eve. The day I like to call Amateur's Night Out. Hey, darling, can I get a glass of water from you? Thank you. You bet. Uh, where am I? Only... Only a sucker with too much cabbage in their billfold would spend 10 times the normal cover charge. I caught her in my peripheral vision. Who, uh, what's so special on New Year's Eve? Don't give me that. This is the last day before my New Year's resolutions kick in rant because we all know that 99.9% .9 of all New Year's resolutions end up in the crapper by January 3rd. I love people who are going to, quote, stop smoking starting tomorrow. <laughs> Come on, most people have the same self-control as Delta Burke in a bakery. And save your starting January 1st, I'm starting a new life spiel. What are you, signing your 10 movie $200 million contract? Have you come up with the winning Powerball numbers? Have you decided to be a nicer, better person to your fellow man? If you answer no to any of the following, then just as I thought, New Year's Eve is just another day. Thank you. <laughs> oh. uh. To me, New Year's Eve, oh, that's good water. Uh. To me, New Year's Eve is just a holiday to see how much hooch we can swivel down the hole, how many piles of puke we can leave in the neighbor's planters, and how many Advil we can pop to make that pounding go away as we're face down in the sewer. Come on, ladies and gentlemen. Just because the number on your calendar has red digits, that's no excuse to show the rest of the world that our livers are imitating Mickey Mantles, all right? No mail in the box isn't a sign that the... I'm glad we're not live. Uh, where am I at? Well, I don't know where the hell we are. So, uh, <laughs> hold on, hold on. Let me get this straight. There you go. All right, let me get this straight. Is this the right one? That's not the right one. Oh. Uh, 
it doesn't matter. Screw it. Worthless holidays suck. That's my take. But then again, what the hell do I know? Before we go on, before we go on, I have a special thanks. I want to throw out a couple of kudos out to Wolf, Jason, Sheila, Catherine, Eric, Carlos, and the entire staff at Cafe Netherworld. Give it up for Cafe Netherworld. You guys rule. Also, also I want to send out a huge kudos to my brother in smack, Phil Terrell. Dude, you fucking rule. How many strip club regulars do we have in the house? <laughs> how many, all right, how many people like sluts? <laughs> strip clubs. Forgive me, but I have to throw my two cents in here. Now, I very rarely venture out to the strip club circuit. You know, I look at it this way. Why pay for tits and ass that I can't touch in strip clubs when if I apply myself, I can get it for free on the outside? Besides. <laughs> Besides. Whatever. Uh, besides, the $10 cover and $8 thimble of water down Pepsi pretty much deflate that boner in a hurry. Yeah. In order to run this take, I went to three different types of strip clubs. First, the higher scale strip club, where all the women are, where all the women are perfect 10 models and there are so many bouncers, I feel like the president in town. Yeah. When I hit the strip club circuit, I prefer the high scale clubs for the simple fact that when I go drain the lizard, I'm not afraid of stumbling over a stripper's legs that are hanging off from underneath the stall as she does her mouth ex exercises to work off that 20. Yeah! <laughs> that segue brings me to the lower scale strip clubs, where the strung out dancers still have fresh track marks, and while they're dancing, their pager that's clipped to their G-string keeps going off. Yeah! Another sign that you're in a shithole strip club, your cocktail waitress sets her tray down on your lap to go do her bit to the Casio keyboard version of Wham's Wake Me Up Before You Go-Go. <laughs> One thing I've always wondered, who's in charge of squeegeeing the vagina spooge into the bucket from the mattressless waterbed frames with the Christmas lights in lower scale strip club holes? You don't get paid enough. <laughs> Here, here's a shocker. I once saw a guy get hustled in a sleaze hole strip club. I know it's hard to believe, but it happens. I actually kind of felt sorry for the guy, but that lasted about 10 seconds as I realized that John's <laughs> strip club patrons, it's survival of the fittest. Here's how it all went down. A stripper approached a mark a few feet from me. After a couple of minutes, a cocktail waitress walked over and took the couple's order. She asked, quote, would you like to buy the young lady a drink, end quote. The guy, while staring at his company's stretched mark granny cleavage and thinking with his little brain, nodded his head. The stripper responded with, quote, I'll take a cranberry juice. Apparently, she wanted to cure her urinary tract infection. The guy, <laughs> the guy, the guy ordered the same. The guy ordered the same, undoubtedly to show, look how much we have in common. <laughs> After. Uh, I know, I'm trying. After the order was taken, the waitress left the table. After a few minutes of the stripper telling Joe Schmo how cute he thought she thought he was, the waitress returned to the table with the two cranberry juices. 
She set the two drinks in front of the couple as the guy dug for his wallet. Here's where I spit my brown flavored water all over the table. The waitress with a straight face said, quote, that'll be $21. As the guy sat in stunned belief and with a facial expression of, you just shot my mother 21 times, and as, and as his winky shriveled up inside his stomach, the stripper took a sip of her 1050 non-alcoholic beverage. After a minute of silence, the stripper excused herself from the table as the guy gave the waitress two 20s for two cranberry juices. <laughs> Hook, line, sucker. <laughs> as for the third type of strip clubs, the all-nude strip joint. I guess the phrase leaving something to the imagination is pretty much an oxymoron here, huh? I love the strippers. Yeah. I love the strippers who want to start up a conversation with you as she buries her baby powdered scented clam on your beak. Yeah. As <laughs> as lavender is spread eagle and grinding her coochie on your snout, she runs with quote nice weather we're having. You, you don't know how to respond, as you can clearly see her three-month-old fetus as it waves to you from the womb. <laughs> Nudes, nude stripping is the only profession where women will show total strangers their G-spots for a dollar. A dollar! If anybody in this room, if anybody in this room has two quarters, three dimes, two nickels, and ten pennies in their pocket and an all-nude strip joint, you can see the internal organs of the woman of your choice. God bless America. Whether I have, whether, whether it's the high scale or the sleazier scale, all strip clubs have one thing in common. The clientele is exactly the same. Most men who frequent strip clubs on a regular basis, I'm guessing haven't been laden so long that the condoms they carry in their wallet expired when the best part of Britney Spears ran down her mother's neck and onto the Motel 6 pillowcase. Yeah. <laughs> Watching guys in strip clubs is sometimes more amusing than what's happening on stage. I love guys. I love guys' reactions when a stripper places her hands. What a what a what a dick that guy was. I love watching guys' reactions when a stripper places her hands on a guy's shoulders and dangles her rack in front of his face. Yeah! <laughs> Biff, Biff sits in his chair trying to be cool as if to project to everybody that <laughs> he sees naked tits every day. Meanwhile, his heart is racing as a female is actually touching him. Yeah! It's priceless. It's priceless. It's priceless to watch the hoochie looking around the room with that disgusted, how long is this goddamn song and all men are scum look on her face. <laughs> Meanwhile, Biff crosses and uncrosses his legs to hide the boner that Bunny caused as she put her saline headlights two inches from his pop bottle glasses. <laughs> Watching a group of guys in strip clubs is even more pathetic. Now. Naked women, alcohol, and out-of-control testosterone should never be allowed in the same room. I actually heard a guy trying to impress the rest of his geek squad by telling them, quote, that stripper's going home with me. <laughs> you don't know how bad I wanted to tell Waldo the truth. You know how the only reason strippers are even talking in his direction is so he keeps dropping grants in their ass floss. And as far as who's going home to what, 
the stripper after her shift will either be going home to her girlfriend or to her bodybuilder hockey husband. As for Waldo, he'll be going home to the tube of KY, a box of tissues, as he rubs his bone to Rachel's Dirty Lesbian Fantasies Part 4. By the way, if you and the rest of the fellas ever go to a strip club and, the rest of, and one of your loser friends ever says the words, quote, yeah, she wants me, drag his sorry ass to the bathroom and give the matron, or pimp, depending on where you are, a fin to knock some sense into him. I, th I think I can pretty much summarize strip clubs pretty easily. As far as the clientele, a group of horny, wannabe high rollers sporting their Tommy Hilfiger rags and baseball caps to hide their ball spots while drooling on themselves like Stephen Hawking. In every strip club, in every strip club around the country, I guarantee you right this second, there's some dork trying to show off and get into the pants of girls he can never have by smoking his $2 chicken bone cigar, throwing down $8 micro brews like it's his 21st birthday and the plane is going down, and every 10 minutes checking his cell phone for messages just to look important. By the way, note to all strip club regulars with the calluses on your palms, if the doorman knows your name like Norm from Cheers, it may be time to get yourself a hobby, all right? One last thing. I don't. <laughs> Cell phones are the antichrist. All right. One last thing. One last thing. I don't even want to think about the disease collection on those brass poles in the middle of the stages. I can pretty much guess there's shit on those poles that don't have names yet. Hell, I'm looking at them. I salute whoever came up with the concept of strip clubs. You make Alexander Graham Bell look like a wussy. That's my take, but then again, what the hell do I know?
Now, we are up to track number seven, and I realized that the previous six, I have come out here and shotgun blasted everything like a drunk redneck in Carton Plant, Arkansas. But ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna put all of my pessimism in the receptacle, at least until the next take. For this presentation, you can refer to me as Dr. Axel Westheimer, because you know me, I like to help out the sexes. I'm gonna spew some helpful hints and suggestions to the masses. Before I begin, I want everybody to take one piece of my advice and put it to good use, all right? After all, I am a doctor. <laughs> Forgive me, but I have to throw my two cents in here. Men, if you're looking for the mute, nymphomaniac, Britney Spears, who, who's... What? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> all right. Hold on, let me get... All right, here, let me try this again. All right, phew. Men, if you're looking for the mute, nymphomaniac, Britney Spears look-alike, who's addicted to giving hummers anal sex and threesomes, quit looking. Ah. Women, if you're looking for the, if you're looking for the mute, Brad Pitt look-alike, who doesn't burp, fart, or play with his sack in public, quit looking. Men, 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 don't use pickup lines to hit on women. Most women can see through you like a sheet of saran wrap when you break out the well-crafted line, quote, if I told you you had a great body, would you hold it against me, end quote. <laughs> women, women in bars, don't expect to be saved by your girlfriends all night. If you're an out of control, lush, hoochie, you have that flashing bang me and make me squeal like the pig that I am neon sign on your chest. Sometimes, <laughs> she is funny. Sometimes your girlfriends just want to have a good time without having to skank sit you 24 seven. And believe it or not, and believe it or not, some nights your girlfriends want to have a good time. Yeah. Men. 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 Don't hit on every woman with four lips and a pulse with the mindset that one will say yes. All you're proving, all you're proving is the last. <laughs> this is a sick crowd. I love it. All you're proving is that the last naked female your desperate eyes gazed upon was through the peep show window at the local skin house. Women, if you're a size 14, for Christ's sake, don't try and pour yourself into size 3 clothes, all right? Uh, if your leg flab folds up and over the mini skirt and you need scissors to get them off, that's a sign, that's a clear cut sign you need to break out the tent size smock frock. Men, men, quit honking your fucking car horns at women on the street, all right? They are not Hollywood and Vine hookers looking for Johns. At least most of them aren't. <sighs> hey, Einsteins, in case you couldn't figure this out for yourself, a woman, after being honked at, isn't going to tear off all her clothes, jump in the passenger side of your 91 Metro, and start slobbing on your blowpipe. Okay, idiots? <laughs> Keep your eyes on the road. And as for guys who over the years honked at me thinking I was female from behind, tell anybody that you still live at home and on Friday nights you play doctor with your candy blow-up doll with the vibrating vagina and ass. Women, women, after your first date, put the thoughts of marriage into the wishful thinking portion of your brain. 
The only reason he opened up your door and said you were the hottest girl in the country is so that he could eat at the Y and so he could stick his winky into something stinky. Men, men, when you're talking to women, their faces are up here, not down here. Since, since the dawn of time, since the dawn of time, a set of tits never talked back, all right? Women, women. If you, care, if you catch a guy carrying on a conversation with your rack as he drools all over himself like Christopher Reeves, jam a high heel in his eye socket. All right, ladies? And since you have my permission, that's good enough. Before I wrap up yet another family-oriented take, here's some advice for both sexes. First, if your IQ is under 80, please get yourself fixed. Now, now I'm not Bob Barker, but let me just say this public service announcement. Help control the illiterate trailer park population. Get yourself spayed or neutered, all right? The last thing I want, the last thing I want is a mutant army of Tanya Hardings meandering around like toothless deadhead on shrooms and whose interests include pro wrestling, tractor pulls, and, the, and recording the best of Springer highlights. Whew. Second. Second, don't give me that quote, I'm single because I want to be horse shit. That's just your way of saying to the world, all right, hey, you'll like this one. That's just your way of saying to the world that nobody can stand your constant bitching, blunt smoking, alcohol drinking till you puke, tobacco chewing, line snorting, pathological lying, ball scratching, nose picking, booger eating, eating, cigarette chain smoking, out of control farting, toothless cussing every word, other other word, Porn addiction, jobless, horrific body odor, beardy, bitter, beer belly, insecure, jealousy ridden ass for more than 10 minutes at a clip. Yeah. Woo! Oh. <laughs> next, next, please, please, for the love of God, don't videotape yourselves having sex. The thought, the thought of two chunky grizzly bears getting it on is a disturbing thought. I think if I ever saw it because I accidentally punched up the wrong website, I would have to Kurt Cobain my skull all over my wall. I think it's pretty safe to say I could go my entire life without watching a hairy ass bouncing up and down while little balls of poop hang like tree ornaments on December 25th. Yeah. Yeah. Take that visual home with you. And finally, and finally, if you do happen to pick up a pathetic goober from the opposite sex, how about using some birth control, huh? Yeah. <laughs> And no, the pull-out method isn't good enough. I know a woman who's 31 years old and has 11 kids. Let me, let me repeat that. I know a woman who's 31 and has 11 kids. Actually, 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 since I started this take, actually, since I started this take, number 12, just flew out and the basketball team is now complete. Okay, okay, here you go. Here you go. Y'all will like this one too. This is dedicated to stank This is dedicated to skank woman whose penis cozy is wider than the Grand Canyon, all right? There once was a woman who was little over 30. She didn't protect herself because she was dirty. 
She had so many kids, she doesn't know what to do. Her body's so destroyed, her uterus falls out every time she makes number two. Newsflash, newsflash, sex can be fun. And you don't have to break out the plastic EPT cigar tube after every lay. I, I can't tell you how tired I am of watching little bastard children while walking around with their sperm collecting mothers approaching every Swing and Johnson on the street. Are you my daddy? Are you my daddy? Yeah. On that note, I, I, hoped I, helped, I hope I helped out those who weren't quite clear on the rules. That's my take, but then again, what the hell do I know? Yeah. <laughs> before, we get into the, before we get into this next take, more special thanks. I want to thank my crew, Dana, Dana, Lisa, Jason, Guy in the truck, Angel, my hot cue card girl, my security guy, Dave, Also, also, give it up for audio consultants who are cutting the CD tonight. Yeah. Most of all, I want to thank all you sick motherfuckers for coming out tonight. Yeah. This is for you. Cheers. Before I cut loose with this next take, I can't promise that I'll be able to get through it without getting pissed as hell. But for CD, video, and TV sake, I'll try. I am going to talk about two bad television shows that not only shouldn't be praised, but in fact should be assassinated from the grassy knoll. Forgive me, but I have to throw my two cents in here. Now. I've been on television since January of 2000, and okay, maybe I'm a little biased, but I think I put out a pretty damn good show. I know, I know people are watching as I'm recognized wherever I go. In fact, I sign things for people who want my signature. God forbid. <laughs> But yet, I have not made dollar one after 98 episodes. Being that I am, being that my television show, being. <laughs> Whew. All right. Thank, thank God, thank God for editing. Uh, being, being that I am on television, I like to surf around the, at the shows that are popular and making money. Two of the most popular shows on television right now caught my attention. First, the Anna Nicole Smith Show. dog pile on this topic as it's only been done a thousand times in three months by every couch critic in the country but this show is like watching a third trimester abortion being performed on your mother on her birthday as she rips the heads off of kittens yeah. <laughs> E E what E E what in the hell are you thinking given the bloated, gold-digging, foul-mouthed, drugged-out, single-digit IQ, illiterate pig keys to the network. That's a brilliant idea. I wanted to blow my brains out when I found out that the Anna Nicole Smith show scored the highest rating for a premiere in cable TV history. This this fat, whiny, this, 
This fat, whiny pig and her gaggle of leeches are making history by putting out that drivel? God, kill me now. The pig, the pig launched a classic blast in the first minute of episode number one. Quote, people think I'm fat. Well, maybe I am a little big boned. End quote. Whatever, sweat hog. I'm guessing, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing her shits are so massive, they have their own shits, all right? Is it me, or can anybody else understand what the hell this pill-popping pig is saying? Shut the fuck up! Correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't this pig supposed to be the next Marilyn Monroe a decade ago? Oh, so close. Now, now I've never said this about another human being, at least not publicly, <laughs> but Anna Nicole, Anna Nicole Smith, please feel free to kill yourself. I know, I know that's harsh, but there's the episode I'd watch. I will hoover down the popcorn as the pig swallows a fistful of whale poison and then winds down like an old grandfather clock. That would be entertainment for me. And ladies and gentlemen, have we lost sight of the fact that Anna Nicole Smith is a mother? Remember, Remember, it was me who said on this date, October 19th, 2002, that in 10 years we'll watch Daniel on court TV during his trial for murdering the underage hooker because she injected his last speedball. Good luck, kid. You are going to need it. Oh, wait, maybe Howard K. Stern can represent you at your trial. <laughs> Oh wait, I forgot that as soon as the pig gets her Brinks truck settlement, this slimy little rat will snake his percentage off the top and be gone quicker than Liz Taylor's husband after the ether wears off. Here's a question. Here's a question. What's the deal with Kim, the assistant? How worthless is this cotton candy head? This leech makes Robin Quivers look like show contributor of the year. I guess Kim can sleep pretty comfortably at night knowing she collects mad cabbage as her toughest gig for the day is picking up sugar pie shit. Good for you, Kimster. Is, uh, is, is Bobby Trendy gay? Because, you know, I can't quite tell. I know this is a stretch, no pun intended, <laughs> but I'll lay 10,000 to one says he's fruitier than a bowl of tricks. Silly faggot, dicks are for chicks. Oh yeah, I'll get a phone call on that one. For the, rec for the record, I'd rather take a switchblade and pumpkin out my eyes rather than watch this abortion of a show. Let's pull the plug on the worst program ever put on TV and save what little brain power the American public has left, all right? Yeah! The second worst show on television right now, The Osbournes. It's official. John Michael Osborne has hit rock bottom. Yeah. I've had so many people come up to me, you gotta watch the Osbournes, you gotta watch the Osbournes. So I caved and made it a point to sit down and watch the goddamn Osbournes. After viewing this, after viewing this, let me just say, it's a lucky thing none of these Eggerons were in the room with me after this 30 minute tragedy ended as I was in Ike Turner mode yet again. 
the entire half hour, I was trying to figure out how is this show supposed to be entertaining? Watching the maid pick up dog crap? <laughs> oh, where do they come up with them? Or maybe it's supposed to be funny that every other word out of this group of Euro retards mouths gets bleeped out. Yeah, that's real fresh and amusing, knowing that the white trash disease hits anyone no matter how large your bank account is. I am going to go on record right now and say those two little foul mouth Osborne rug rat bastards need to be taken outside and beaten to within an inch of their lives. If, if my kids that I don't know about <laughs> ever spoke to me, ever spoke to me the way those two Osborne pukes talk to their parents, I would gladly hand them the 1-800 number before I beat them unrecognizable. Yeah. Yeah. No wonder, no wonder kids of today don't respect anything or anyone. Every week they can watch Jack and Kelly crank out four-letter torpedoes and not get punished. Yeah. By the way, but why should this not surprise me? A pathetic network like MTV paying huge paying huge jack to members of our, of our decaying society to act like real life beavis and buttheads. Yeah. And even worse, we're dumb enough to sit and watch this bullshit week after week. I used to, I used to, I used to, I used to think Sharon Osbourne was a smart businesswoman. But the more I watch her, the more annoying she gets. Every time Sharon Osbourne opens up her pie hole, it's like somebody running their fingernails across the chalkboard. A quick note, a quick note to Sharon. A quick note to Sharon Osbourne, shut the fuck up and go light somewhere, all right? And, 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 and Ozzy, and Ozzy, you're no better. Is this, guy the po is this guy the poster child for not doing drugs or what? Sharon, Sharon. I look, I look at Ozzy Osbourne, I look at Ozzy Osbourne in the same way I look at Elvis Presley. For those of you over 50, how do you remember Elvis? Young, good looking cat swiveling his hips as all the women wet themselves, breaking off number one hit after number one hit. How do I, how, uh, yeah, how, how, how do, how, how do, how do How, uh, how, uh, how, how do, how do I remember Elvis since I'm only 31? A, a fat drug addict with bad hair who was found dead on the crapper as empty pill bottles hung halfway out of his king of rock and roll chocolate starfish. With that said, with that said, I want to remember Ozzy Osbourne as one of the pioneers of rock music. The man who inspired, oh, every band in the last 20 years. I want, I want to remember Ozzy for his classic tracks like Crazy Train, Paranoid, No More Tears, War Pigs, and I Don't Want to Change the World. I want to remember the Ozzy who shared the concert stage with the array of amazingly talented musicians like Tony Iommi, Jakey e. Lee, Randy Rhodes, Bill Va Steve Vai, Phil Ward, and my personal favorite, and my personal favorite, Zach Wilde. Unfortunately, after watching six weeks of the Osbournes while compiling notes for this take, 
The legacy of Ozzy Osbourne is now down to a decrepit, retarded, Ronald Reagan-esque, old, fumbling buffoon who takes 30 minutes to answer a question. And whose, and whose wife is an annoying nag, rubbing it in our face how rich she is, and whose kids are spoiled, rotten little shitbags. Congra congrats, John. You've blown every positive image I've ever had for you. I'm guessing Randy Rhodes must be spinning in his grave at this horrific television sellout. And oh yeah, Ozzy, when you retire for the 10th time, mean it. <laughs> stay off of the radio, stay out of music stores, and especially stay off of television. Your act is tired and your music now sucks. In case you couldn't tell, I'm over this reality concept that seems to be none dating our television screens. Look, I don't care about watching Anna Nicole Smith whining about finding a bathtub that she can squeeze her big fat ass into. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't care about what Sharon Osbourne bought her pet psychic for Christmas. For Christ's sakes, enough already. After 9-11, I was hoping maybe people in our society would get their priorities in check and not spend an hour with parasites who passed their prime 10 years ago. I guess what I'm trying to say is, when does Todd Bridges' reality show start? Actually, 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 I should probably zip my hole. I don't want to spark any ideas. That's my take, but then again, what the hell do I know? Uh, how many rock and roll fans do we have in the house tonight? <laughs> now, oh yeah, oh yeah, here we go. This little monologue will put the sniper holes in my wall for sure. <laughs> We are going people watching in rock nightclubs. Forgive me, but I have to throw my two cents in here. Since I do a rock and roll type TV show, this diatribe will probably hit a little close to home. 
So let's keep in mind that this is still comedy. Let's also keep in mind that I am not well in the head and I can pretty much find something wrong in everything. Let's keep the sense of humor mechanism on. We all can be poked a little fun at. With that said, people watching in rock clubs, definitely the most unique species of club participants. Now, I hate to flash back, but I can remember 1989, a little rock club in Glendale, Colorado called Bangles. Uh, all the guys, all the guys look like chicks and the women look like Bon Jovi video sluts. Women wore their hair high, bras as tops, and skirts so short you could tell what religion they were. People wanted to party all night. People wanted to party all night and have nothing but a good time all the time. The music, the music was so great, I still sport guitar screeching wood to this day. Party bands like Rat, Motley Crue, Bon Jovi, Faster Pussycat, Poison, Cinderella, Skid Row, and the list goes on and on. Set the tone. That set the tone for a sex-filled evening. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Fast, forward, fast forward 13 years. Now rock clubs remind me of the watermelon rind scraps you trip over after the People's Fair closes. You're right. <laughs> when the most requested bands of today are Corn, Tool, Rage Against the Machine, and Limp Biscuit, maybe that's my sign that I am getting too old for this shit. Yeah. <laughs> While I'm on the music subject, if I hear that horribly written, overplayed, waste of CD space, dog shit, nine inch nails closer one more time, I'm gonna hurt everyone around me. It's hard, it's hard to get into my head that it's not 1989 anymore. So now I, basic, I basically frequent strip clubs for entertainment purposes only. I mean, what else would I do there? Pick up women? <laughs> the only way, the only way I'd take some of these rock club women home is if I could set up a liposuction machine in the corner. I really, I really don't feel like playing the find the vagina in the sea of buttery flab game tonight, thanks. There's more, there's more spare tires in rock clubs than there are at the Daytona 500. In metal's heyday, in metal's heyday, women actually took pride in how they looked because if you weren't a hottie, you were thought of as the designated driver for the Christina Applegate look-alike pieces of ass who are going to be moaning around three o'clock in the morning. Now. Now, in the year 2002, I'm guessing women are going for the Rob Zombie meets Texas Chainsaw Massacre look. But why, should the, but why should the rock club women of today give a shit about their appearance? After the hooch kicks in, it's time to play the beer goggle, I'll settle for dork number three game. The thing that gets me, the women of... <laughs> the thing that gets me, the women from 10 years ago are still wearing the same clothes. Now, 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 there's nothing wrong with that, but multiple kids and 60 pounds later trying to squeeze themselves into cat suits, stop it! Yeah, 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 10 years ago, 10 years ago, you were a piece of ass, 
Now a piece of your ass has its own zip code, all right? And can we please do something about the tiny tops that show off those hideously stretch mark racks? Yeah, 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 honey, pull your top down. I'm trying to get directions to Colorado Springs. While I'm at it, while I'm at it, what's with the chicks with those big tattoos all over their bodies? What the hell's that about? Whatever happened? Whatever, whatever happened, whatever happened to the little heart on the titty or the butterfly on the calf? <laughs> right. Now, now chicks are all sleeved out, sporting the dragon and the jungle back piece, and the bloody skulls that cover the entire leg. Yeah, that's. Yeah, that's real feminine. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, Butch, I want to skank you. Not be afraid that you're going to roll me from my wallet. Before I move on, here's an, an amusing anecdote. The night I compiled my notes for this monologue, I was approached by an older woman in the club. Nothing special. I wouldn't have looked at her twice, even if Captain One-Eye hadn't seen any action in a long time. <laughs> she proceeded to introduce herself. After the flirtatious greeting, she asked me what I did for fun. So me, being the cheap hooker that I am, I handed her a business card and told her about my television show. She yeah. I. She, I became bored, I became bored and started looking over the crowd as the woman rambled on about how she hated television. After a couple of minutes of courtesy head nods, she asked me, quote, you probably like those pretty young things in their 20s, don't you? End quote. Yeah, yeah, no fucking shit, Mrs. Roper. <laughs> what gave that away? And where the hell did that little bitchy outburst come from? After I nodded my head yes, she handed my business card back to me and walked away. Well, excuse the piss out of me for not being into bitter sea hags in their 40s. I knew this uptight broad for five minutes and 30 seconds and wanted to kill her. Just a quick note, do yourself a favor there, fatal attraction skank. Forget I ever made your acquaintance. I don't want to come home to find a dead kitten swinging from a noose on my front porch with my picture covering the cats. Yeah. It's amusing when I walk into rock clubs, look around the room at the women, I start thinking to myself, did her, did her, did her, saw her naked and got a hummer from her in the front seat of her car in the parking lot. What about the bathroom? I know that sounds bad. I know that sounds bad, but it's not my fault. Raw clubs are one big swinging gala. Yeah! Besides, besides, Will Chamberlain has a record that I want, and no 100 points in a game isn't it. Yeah! It's also not my fault that the girl who was with me last month was with Bill two weeks ago and is going home with Ron tonight. What? Some of these women are being done by so many guys that when they open their legs, flowers are wilting outside. And just for the record, that's not a bad thing, because as everybody in this room, we salute sluts. Yeah! <laughs> I've always wanted to approach a guy who recently took his bat with the skank Francisco Giant after I had already reached base to ask him how I tasted and if I needed to mix in more greens in my diet. It kind of weirds me out. It kind of weirds me out now that I think about it. In essence, I could say that I've boned everybody in the club. Sweet. Have you ever paid attention? Have you? 
You need more greens in your diet, pal. Let me tell you what. Have you ever? Have you ever paid attention to the dance floor in rock clubs? At first, I thought some of Jerry's kids got loose for a night. <laughs> Drunk white people trying to keep in rhythm to Pantera's Cowboys from Hell. Stop it, I'm pissing myself. I personally love the women who dance with their girlfriend to avoid being hit on by dorks. This is priceless. As Rico, as Rico Suave with a mullet cut, Iron Maiden tee, and a garage maid tattoo of a black blotch approaches the lone female dancer. She's then forced to grab her girlfriend and grind her beaver on her leg like a horny basset hound trying to ward off dementia. My question, my question then becomes, what the hell good does that do? Now instead of asking you to dance, he's now luring at the two of you like Hannibal Lecter on the date rape drug, drug fantasizing about what it would look like if you two 60-90'd each other. Way to go. Way to go. Now he thinks he can get both of you in some kind of lipstick lesbian trifecta. <coughs> I'm telling you, rock clubs are the greatest entertainment a $2 cover can buy. I just, I just can't get enough of the unfunny disc spinners cracking off jokes that he saw on Comedy Central earlier that day. I especially love, even though I'm a non-smoker, leaving rock clubs smelling like an ashtray from a bingo parlor. That's real nice. My advice, my advice. Hit a rock club, stay sober, and enjoy the show. That's my take, but then again, what the hell do I know? All right, are you ready for one more before we grub or what? Woo! Tonight, 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 I am ending. Tonight I am ending on a diatribe of four miscellaneous nuggets that I think I need to talk about before my head explodes. So without further ado, without further ado, forgive me, but I have to throw my two cents in here. I don't want to continue to wear out this story, but it's just too sick to throw that last shovel of dirt on. In April, in April of 2002, In April of 2002, somebody in this country paid $3,500 for a chewed piece of gum that belonged to Arizona Diamondback baseball player Luis Gonzalez. Is this a clear-cut sign that the end is near or what? I mean, I mean, picture this. <laughs> I mean, Picture some dickhead at his computer entering credit card digits for 3,500 bones for a chew of piece up double bubble. I don't know this for sure, but I can only guess that this piece of gum is on the mantle along with Monica Lewinsky's Q-tip, Ted Kennedy's empty beer bottle, Ron Jeremy's used condom, Madonna's phone bill receipt, and the preserved drop of sweat from Tiffany's 1989 world tour. I think if my dad ever called me up to the den to probably show me a wad of gum that he paid $3,500 for, the first phone call I'd make would be to Dr. Kevorkian. Yeah. Yeah. But hey, albeit for me to tell people what to collect and what to spend their jack on, if the purchase item came out of a human being, that is a bit much. Yeah. $3,500 bones for a chewed piece of gum. Incredible. What the hell was that about? <laughs> this, this, this just goes to show me that the wrong people have all the money. Yeah, honey, I knew I said we were going on that family vacation, but this is Gonzo's gum. Nice job, Hick. Why don't you sneak into the San Francisco Giants locker room and scoop out Barry Bond's stool while you're at it? Do me a favor. Yeah. Do me a favor, Hick. 
The next time you flip on eBay and you see the used steroid needle that still has Sammy Sosa's ass fat from that morning's pumping on it, keep the checkbook closed. Check this. And keep in mind, I can't make this up if I wanted to. According, according to a San Antonio, Texas newspaper in 2002, over three dozen complaints to the San Antonio police alleged sightings of senior citizens engaging in sexual activities. <laughs> the, the popular places for this the popular places of choice for this horrific liver spot public display of fornication were swimming pools, spas, golf carts, while on the course, and bingo parlor parking lots. Yeah! Now, now, for the life of me, I just can't get the visual out of my head of Abe Vigoda ass-pounding Betty White while on the green of the ninth hole. Yeah! You know, you know, you know, oh. I am not even going to repeat that one. She's bent over the walker, tits hanging like kosher deli meat, as the old loose skin slaps together like two Chinese Sharpays fighting for the chew toy. How would you like to stumble across Grandma and Grandpa during a bingo recess in the front seat of the Cadillac? Grandma's teeth resting on the dashboard as you see her gray head bobbing on Grandpa's snake and eggs. Scro sc scrogging during bingo. I'll never be able to hear the phrase 069 again ever with a straight face. Now you figure, with those outrageous rates these senior citizens' homes are charging, they should be able to provide a romper room for Rip Van Winkle to drop trow and spray sawdust on Nana's baseball glove pie hole. Yeah! Woo! You know, so we don't have to see it as we take the kiddies to the public pool on a Saturday afternoon. Yeah! I can only... I can only guess, after Matlock, the TV room in the nursing homes must break out into full-scale orgies, huh? Yeah! Just, just, just move the white cotton panties away from the blue cheese crack before going to town on that burnt toast penis cozy. Yeah! I would, I would, I would hate to be. <laughs> I would hate to be the person cleaning up after the Viagra party in the rec room, picking up the soiled Geritol flavored condoms after Herb busts his nut in Grandma's butt. And, 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 and just a, and just a sidebar, and just a sidebar. What does an elderly woman's vagina taste like? Depends. A group of a group of parasites that I'm sick of, moshers. What? 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 What in the hell is your deal? We went to the Rogue CD release party at the Ogden Theater. We decided it'd be kind of cool to hit the floor to watch Cone's own friends Peace, Love, and Destruction play their set. <laughs> while we were on the floor, while we were on the floor, there they were. The skinhead, shirtless, fat, pasty white pieces of shit blobs known as moshers. <laughs> They looked pretty funny walking around with that blank.
They look pretty funny walking around with that blank stare <laughs> and arms bowed out resembling the cerebral palsy monkey from Planet of the Apes. Yeah. As soon as as soon as as soon as Plaid dropped their first song, it was on. These metal midgets started slamming each other on the auditorium floor, wiping out innocent concert goers in their path. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, I know. If I don't want to be treated like an air hockey puck, I shouldn't have gone to the show. Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah right. Fuck you. There's absolutely no reason this should be happening at concerts. And don't try to sell me that these dumber than corn cob losers are getting their aggressions out because frankly, I'm not buying it. Believe it or not, believe it. Oh. I, I'm not gonna repeat that one either. Believe it or not, there are people who go to concerts to watch their friends play without getting an elbow in the middle of their back. And just, and just for the record, and just for the record, losers, you want to get some aggressions out? Take a hammer to your nutsack. Yeah! Or even better, try to tackle a moving semi on I-25. I'm going to spill it out for you moshing losers who are watching me right now. The next time I get shoved from behind or a flying elbow to my skull, I'm going to crack a bottle up over your head and we'll see how fun it is then. I will watch. I will. I will. <laughs> I'll watch with glee as doctors take turns picking grass shrapnel glass shrapnel out of your empty skull as saliva drips out of your Pantera food hole. Yeah! And, you, and, you, and you think I'm kidding? Try me. One, one, one final bitch and I am done for the night. That wasn't exactly how that was supposed to turn out. <laughs> I, I saw something pretty disturbing the other night when I went to my usual rock nightclub hangout, which will remain nameless, Hollywood legends. <laughs> On the dance floor, on the dance floor, there he was, Mr. Air Guitar Player. Yeah! Now normally when the hooch kicks in, it's inevitable. Some jackass will let loose with his impression of a Randy Rhodes guitar solo during Crazy Train, and it ends there. But the ass jockey I saw the other night took air guitar playing to an entirely different level. When he wasn't strutting around the club like Steve Vai, he was on the dance floor air guitaring 80s metal tunes. During his performance, CC Scrotum Sack fingered each note during the song. Yeah, each note. Also, also during each song, he'd glance around at the crowd, admiring all who turned out for the show. You know, like he was Ace Freely at Donington. Now, I've. I've always said there's nothing more pathetic than a cover band. Well, I stand corrected. <laughs> How about some jerk off who air guitars cover songs? Yeah, I think that qualifies. Maybe it's me, but this guy and every other Eddie Van Halen poser is a tragic case of a life filled with failures. I wanted to be a smart ass and ask Mr. Air Guitar Player when was the Air Guitar Greatest Hits CD release party, but I, but I refrained. Does anybody want to lay odds that this sad retard practices his air guitar moves in front of the full length on a daily basis? Yeah, I think that's about as good a guarantee as the sun will come up tomorrow.
Look, freak, as much as I love to watch you jam on the air fender, do me a favor, quack. Hang up the pretend six string. Playtime ended in the sixth grade. Yeah. 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 Props, props to you on how you wail on your make-believe Ibanez, but I'm guessing if somebody handed you a real guitar, you'd probably sound like a 12-year-old learning smoke on the water. Yeah. And if you really can play a real guitar, for Christ's sake, go join a cover band so at least people will quit laughing at you behind your back as you make a butthole out of yourself. The, there, my bitches are out of my system. I know some of this sounded a little harsh, but really, I've been here to help all night long. I hope my diatribe didn't go in one ear and out the other. That's my take, but then again, what the hell do I know? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good night, Denver.